love boxing and I love cigars and I've hooked up here with one of my favorite people in one of my favorite places. Let's go to old San Juan in Puerto Rico with my guy, the legend, Jose Izquierdo. Jose, how are you? Welcome to The Blend. How are you, Jim? It's a pleasure. Finally, we make this happen. We've been talking about it for a while. Um, I don't know if, if boxing and cigars are considered vices, but if they are, we, we share some pretty Listen, good vices. Man. There are worse things to get involved in. Now, we'll get into Jose's uh, boxing uh, uh, sort of a uh, connection, you know, but he's a lawyer and he's a boxing advisor. But the first thing I want to get into is obviously we're a cigar show and, and you know, you're, you're lighting up that bad boy right there. And the first question I always ask people, Jose, is how did the cigar find you? Because I think it finds us. I don't think we go and look for it. I think it comes to your life. So how did the cigar find Jose Esquerdo? Well, I mean, to be honest, I think I've been smoking cigar for uh, cigars for more than half my life. Um, at this point, I'm 40, but but I've been smoking forever. Um, my grandmother taught me to smoke. Uh, she she lived to a to a very old age, and um, she wouldn't smoke all these nice cities we smoke these days, all these sophisticated hand rolled cigars. Um, she would literally just ask me to go down to the uh, farmers market um, in a town called Juan Arias in Puerto Rico and, and get like the cheapest cigars, the only cigars they had there. And she would cut them up into pieces. And sometimes in the afternoons, she would be like, Nene, quieres uno? you want one. So, Oh my gosh. Um, and, and then she would make me uh, brush my teeth vigorously uh, to try to hide it from my mom. But then my mom became very much complicit in my, in my habit. Um, you know, I won't call it vice this time, but my mom would help me buy cigars when I was growing older um, and it's always been a part of my life. I, I have to say all throughout college, I smoked cigars. Um, but, you know, it, like everything in life, I think it, it's come to a point where it's not just, you know, the happy moments that, that come with a cigar. It's at any point, um, you know, you have cigars when you endure hardship, you have cigars when you're happy to celebrate occasions. Um, so I guess at every stage in my life, a cigar has been there. Um, and you associate those memories with whatever you're smoking at that time. Well said, my friend. Yeah. A friend of mine once told me a cigar is a portable campfire. You're, you're able to <laughs> take it from here to there and celebrate those moments. And now for what you do, obviously being an attorney, I mean, obviously cigars, are they part of your, of your closing a deal, of meetings, stuff like that? I would imagine that would have to be something that you would incorporate because it's a passion of yours. Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm here at uh, two, uh, 57 Fortaleza Street. Um, that is probably one of the more uh, famous uh, streets in Old San Juan. And it's housed to uh, the cigar shop. It's, it's a marvelous cigar shop. Um, I've had the, the good fortune of, of visiting many cigar shops throughout the world. And I keep coming back here just because I feel like it's the most magnificent selection. Um, the cigars here are, are some of the best. You get some of the rarest uh, cigars. Actually, I'm smoking um, a lovely Arturo Fuente Rare Pink. Um, it's a sophisticated uh, hooker. It's what it's called. And it's an important cigar, not just because it's one of those cigar unicorns that, that we in the cigar world um, like to call, but it's also um, for a nice cost. So you have an excellent smoke for a good cost, which is breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so the proceeds of these cigars um, go to that cost. So you're smoking an amazing blend. Um, I think it's a, it's a nice uh, Colorado uh, wrapper, Ecuadorian. Um, and then you have a Nicaraguan binder and a mix of um, uh, Dominican and Nicaraguan filler. And uh, like I was saying, coming to the cigar shop, all my friends say, if you're not really Jose Izquierdo's friend, if you haven't come to the cigar house. So that also translates to my business. Um, if I haven't closed the deal here, then, you know, I don't feel like I've really established that attorney client uh, privilege uh, <laughs> uh, of sorts. So I, I bring any, anything from like corporate clients to boxers. They've all been here to the cigar house. The cigar house. That is truly Cigar, uh, the uh, attorney client privilege that is truly that. Oh, yeah, you get over to the to to the cigar house in San Juan. So, what listen, I, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been blessed, been all over the world and stuff to 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 smoke cigars, talk about cigars. 
Tell me what the scene is in Puerto Rico, especially in San Juan. I would imagine it's a very vibrant cigar scene. Yeah, it is. Uh, first of all, it's, it's nestled in your proverbial cobblestone street. Um, San Juan is a historic colonial city. Um, I like to say that, that you know, these, these streets uh, talk about history and, and, and everything in between. Um, so it's really, it's really um, uh, a beautiful setting to smoke a cigar. It's ample. Um, we have, uh, or I say we, because I, I've been here since, since they opened. And, and even before, um, I would buy cigars from the shop they had nearby. They have one of the best humidors I've ever seen. Um, and you can get anything from the rarest Arturo Fuente uh, cigars to uh, any of uh, the Davidoff special releases, uh, my father's cigars. Everything is here. Uh, so people are just like astounded by, by just like the sheer setting of the cigar lounge. Um, and in, in general, I feel like the cigar setting uh, here is very much similar to cigar uh, shops everywhere else in the world in the sense that the people make the place special. Um, you and I um, had seen each other in boxing matches while, uh, a while ago, but you know, there's, there's one thing that goes beyond that is we share cigars. So, so when you talk about knowing somebody or meeting somebody and having a perfect stranger become your friend, when you're a cigar smoker, there's already something you know about that person. And, and, and that to me is, is very special and, and really conducive to good conversation. Sitting down here, we have, you know, we talk about everything and the things you're not supposed to talk about, politics, religion, everything is talked about here because from the beginning, there's a, a level of trust that allows you to open up to that person. And it's because they're a cigar smoker. Yeah, it's it, it is it is that connection that we have, you know, whether you're smoking an Arturo Fuente rare paint, which is, by the way, an unbelievable cause. Carlito, as usual, hits a home run with these things or what I got right here, a Villiger 1888 Toro. You know, it's, it's that connection. It's oh Well, let, let me let me have let me get Do you have one. I'll get you one of these sticks. You give me one of those sticks. And, and it, it all it all turns out now. You in the boxing world have traveled all over the world. Is, is there a shop or a lounge that really stood out to you across this great country, across this great globe of ours? I mean, obviously, I, ha I have to go to Vegas a lot um, for, for boxing. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I've become a local uh, of sorts in, in the cigar lounges there. I Obviously, at Caesars, you have... Um, yeah, uh, Monte Cristo, and you also have uh, Arturo Fuente, Arturo Fuente's flagship lounge, which I go to a lot. Um, they have all sorts of good sticks, and more recently, I've been to uh, eight with, at the Resorts World, which I think is fantastic. Um, they have this um, beautiful uh, bar there. The the, the the chairs are very comfortable. I a, a great um uh, extraction uh, system where. You know, you don't really get the, the, the smell of cigar. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, oh. that that smell, but it helps when you bring your wife, your companion. Um, it's 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 a very good atmosphere. And even I, I've recently been to a, a shop at uh, Summerlin that has great selection of cigars too. So so that's Vegas to me. Um, in terms of towns or cities, I think London is the the perfect place to smoke a cigar. Obviously, you have finer selection of Cuban cigars. The Davidoff shop there is fantastic. Uh, more towards um, towards the uh, the area of uh, Knightsbridge, you have the Sahakian Lounge at the Bulgari Hotel. I think that's one of the nicer uh, lounges I've been to uh, recently, and they have a very fine selection of uh, Cuban cigars. As does the Lanesboro Hotel. It's more of a clubby feel, but very good selection. Again, free Castro Cuban cigars, which is um, not something I can afford, but Something that's nice to look at, at least. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of like some of the people walking around in Vegas, you know. It's nice to look <laughs> at. <laughs> and shout out to our buddy Chaz at 8, who uh, yes. runs the door over there, takes care of the humidor. So, you know, next time you go there, talk to, talk to Chaz. Anybody out there, you go to 8, ask for Chaz. 
he will really take really care of you. All right, so uh, let's get into some boxing now. Now, let's. you know, being a boxing advisor, you know, you've got quite the feather in in your in your hat and your cap yeah. with with, with Robesai Ramirez, El Tren, the train, the WBO featherweight champion. It, it just it, tell me what those. I mean, I guess what you can tell me. Tell me what those kind of meetings are because I mean, it seems like it would just be boxing. Is I've always said it's kind of like the the cantina bar in Star Wars. That's what a boxing crowd yeah. is. It's it's just characters and just the, the 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 weirdest, coolest, freakiest people you ever meet. So when you go to a boxing meeting and you've got a promoter or a network over there, what what is that all about? Well, I mean, it, it really it helps to be a lawyer. It, it's funny because when I was younger, I always said I wanted to be a, a sports lawyer. But you say that in abstract, right? Because you know, I love sports. I love uh, football. I love basketball, baseball, as a Puerto Rican, and obviously boxing with our, our rich boxing culture. Uh, but then you try to think about it. It's like, how do I make a career out of this? Um, so obviously you have your formal education, which helps with the negotiating aspect. Um, it helps you to read people. And then along the line, um, you meet somebody like Robesi, who is a very unique um, uh, talent. I, I feel like he's a generational talent, but also a very smart boxer. Um, so so he, uh, and a, per a person in general, he's a, he's a brilliant mind. So it really makes my job as an advisor easier when I'm dealing with somebody like Robesi. Um, and just he just needed a little bit of guidance uh, to reach his potential. And in just 13 professional fights, tying Shakur Stevenson for closest uh, for fastest ever, he becomes uh, the WBO uh, featherweight champion of the world. Um, so so that's really uh, a remarkable achievement considering where he came from, the hardship he endured in Cuba. His, his story about facing um, the, the right word is the atrocities of the regime, as you well know, um, you being of, of, of Cuban heritage. Uh, Robesi was, uh, his, his Olympic tattoos, or his, his Olympic tattoo was torn from his skin. Um, and, and he had to suffer incredibly to finally come to this country and, you know, be the free man that he is right now, fight and if in any way I can contribute to uh, the betterment of his life, his family's life, using my skill and my, my love for sport, um, then I feel like I've done my part. And, and that's why I always like to be on the side of the boxer, nothing against the promoter. Um, they're all my, they're all my friends. Um, but you know, we, we sometimes uh, need somebody at, at, on the side of the fighter and, and that's feel that's where I feel like I can be of, of, of most help. You know, I'm I'm an advocate by nature, um, and and that's what I do best. So I advocate for his career, for for his opportunities, and it's really fulfilling. You know, it's like it's like when you finish a cigar. It's like, you know, it, it has that lingering taste. You know, you're smoking a a, a, a true African Cameroon wrapper, and and that there's that sweet taste to it, right? Yes. Well, that's how yes. it feels when, when you sign that contract and, and you have that world championship opportunity or, or how I feel right now. And, and this, you know, we haven't really said, but Robesi's fighting in Florida finally. And I know that was a, that was a big deal for him. Uh, December 9th, it's happening. You're hearing it here, here first. So that's fulfilling. That's sweet. Breaking news and, you know, on the blend. I mean, there you go. <laughs> December 9th in Miami. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent news. Now, without mentioning any names, because again, we know the characters that <laughs> are, are in this boxing orbit. Has there been any time where you either walked into a meeting or walked out of a meeting going, what the F was that? I mean, like. I have to say um, many times, many times, <laughs> more, 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 more than half of the meetings, I feel like, what the F am I doing here? Um, you know. It, it's you, you feel like you, you're meeting people from all walks of life. But the important thing I feel at the end of the day is, is learning from those experiences. Um, keeping your cool, I think it's important. Um, you're not always going to get what you want in boxing in terms of uh, negotiating. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to make compromises. Uh, boxing does not exist in a vacuum. Um, these, you know, crazy purses that fighters were getting at, at some point are not realistic for everybody. So, so you need to digest all that information and explain it to the fighter. At the end of the day, my job is there 
um, to help the fighter. And I have a fiduciary duty to the fighter, nobody else. So I always explain to the fighters, you know, promoters will exploit you economically. That's that's their job. Then, and there's nothing wrong with it. I make as much money. I make more money if you make more money. So my interest is, is it's, you know, on, on your side. And, and I always like to uh, explain that to them. So, so that uh, we, we know we're a team and we're in it together and, and uh, we're, we're fighting that good fight. But, but yeah, there's, there's a cast of sorted characters uh, that you come across in boxing. Some have cigars, some don't. Um, but, but, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to name any names, but there's, there's a lot of frustration. But at the end of the day, I think love of sport uh, trumps all of that. And, and uh, there's, there's nothing like sitting down. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I've watched thousands of fights in my life. I, I have this ritual where I light up a cigar with my brother um, and, and we watch fights on Saturdays. I, I don't get nervous. I enjoy it. It's not the same thing having a horse in the race um, where I get extremely extremely nervous um but i but i've learned to cope with that and and uh navigate those those crazy boxing waters and it's it's fun it's fun Good. now sort of a sad uh, news in boxing obviously showtime is closing its doors in terms of yeah. boxing an institution 37 years there's no hbo and and you know you've seen i've heard promoters like oscar de la hoya say we all need to work together and this that and the other from your end of it, you know, representing the fighter, I mean, what what can the sport do? How can how can this all realistically come together? Because you're right, I mean, you know, boxers making fifty million dollars, you know, sixty million dollar person, yeah. good good for you, but that doesn't leave much for anybody else. Exactly, and and it is sad. You know, I don't. I I've been on Twitter for a while, and and it upsets me that people are are celebrating the 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 mice of of Showtime. And it's inexplicable to me, like. I, I got along fairly well, very well, actually, with Peter Nelson when he was at uh, HBO. At that time, I was working with the WBO when I was his general secretary. And I, I kind of could see that that was happening um, as, as the, the network was going in a different direction. Um, the Showtime thing kind of caught me by surprise. Um, I really want to applaud the, the message that Oscar sent and also the message that um, Ryan Garcia as a fighter sent, you know. Um, again, there's there's no celebrating it. It's not good, but boxing's been through worse. Um, uh, and and I think there's 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 a duality of things here. You know, boxing on one side has a, a big pitfall. It's, a, it's it's self-regulated in many ways. So it has this like makeshift approach in terms of like regulations, even though we have the ABC and all of that. But but somehow it works in, in, in its dysfunctional way. It, it really works uh, at the end of the day. Um, when people complain about bad officiating, sure, it's there. But if you tally everything up at the end of the day, I think there's more good decisions than bad ones. And I think now this is a, an important juncture, whereas Oscar uh, very well uh, said, um, promoters need to work together and um, seek more opportunities. I. Uh, I mean, I was very pleasantly surprised when when Aram and, and Todd and everybody over at Top Rank struck that deal with ESPN. And that's been fantastic. It's, it's, it's helped bring boxing to different um, uh, uh, platforms, ESPN Plus, ESPN Deportes, all of that. And, and that's fantastic. Um, so I don't doubt that there'll be an opportunity for somebody else, whether it be Amazon Prime, um, Peacock. I don't know. But right now, yeah, it, it, it's it's a reason for concern, obviously, and, and and you don't like to see it, but but boxing always uh, uh you know pushes through and and we'll be all right. Boxing is always I've always said boxing is like that uncle that we have that that there are days that you love them and everything's perfect, and there are days you're like oh boy here we go what we go happened? how did this happen here you know but you love them and you push through it and and it and it's benefits for everybody well Zed, before i let you go let's get back to cigars a, a yeah. little bit um for, for me i know what i love i love my monte cristos i love my yep. padrones if if if, if you, you what was that second one you said my my, my padrones i love the 1924 yeah. yep. 1926s if if you you've made it right you've made it your horse wins the kentucky derby uh, Robesai, you know, Robisi, you know, he, he, he unifies the, the featherweight division. Uh, you get that big contract. What are you smoking? 
Oh, man. Um, I think I, I've become a creature of habit lately. Um, I, I will smoke anything from Arturo Fuente uh, regularly. I, I think he's my, my favorite right now. Um, everything he does is marvelous. Uh, my, my, my go-to cigar is the Don Carlos line. Um, I think Don Carlos cigars are, that Cameroon is fantastic. My, my personal, my favorite is the personal reserve, Don Carlos uh, personal reserve. But, um, you know, when we unify, because that will happen, um, we will unify, we will beat Venado Lopez, um, and, and we'll clean out the division. I think I have um, a Arturo Fuente uh, Opus X um, uh, 20th anniversary Lancero. Beautiful. So, so that's the one I'm, I, I'm picking up in that, in that scenario. Why? Because it's hard to find, and I've been aging them in a while in my humidor. And, um, you know, it, it's truly a fantastic blend. And in the Lancero line, uh, we told, I think it really explodes and, and the flavor is just uh, worthy of, of a momentous occasion like that and a celebration like that. Um, but I, as I say that, there, there's nothing wrong with this rare came from the cigar house. I think it's fantastic. Say well, Listen, I'm a big torpedo guy. I'm a big Toro guy. I've never really stepped, uh, put my, you know, toe in the pool of the Lanceros. It's going to be your job, counselor. You have to get me into that. Miami. Uh, I'll be, I'll be there November 1st. Hopefully you'll come to whatever it is we're, we're organizing. Uh, you'll find out soon. And I'll, and I'll bring a Lancero along for you, Jim. Down on it. That is Jose Izquierdo from La Isla del Encanto from Puerto Rico, my friend. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you, Jim. And let's do it again. Un saludo. Absolutely.